<laughs> John, so good to have you on the show, man. How are you? Wonderful. I miss being with you during the um, FedEx Cup playoffs. I was doing some PGA Tour champions work for Golf Channel, but I'm sure uh, everything at PGA Tour Live was in was in good hands. Yeah, it really was. And I watched a lot of your coverage, man. Um, I thought you and Lanny were dynamite together. Uh, um, he's just a gem, isn't he, Lanny Watkins? Uh, he absolutely is. And um, the, the best stories are reserved for off the air, as you know, from working with some of these <laughs> legends. Uh, and that's for a different audience entirely. Let's put it that way. All right. We'll have to do an on the mark after dark. Okay. Let's um, <laughs> I actually got a round to it. John, uh, everyone who listens to this knows you. Everyone who watches PGA Tour Live knows you now, Golf Channel. So we will we'll skip the introductions. Um, but I just, you know, just to kick this recap off a little bit, I, I just want you to give us, because you're so involved at the tour, you have been for so long, you've called golf since, you know, the year dot. Give us your overview of this 21-22 wraparound PGA Tour season. Just give us the 36,000 foot uh, view. Well, just a normal season, Mark, with no disruptions or no different <laughs> narrative, just the status quo with the, the membership and the he does sponsors. stand up while he's not announcing it's true <laughs> uh it was um it was fascinating on on so many levels and it was a most fitting culmination i think to what was a very turbulent mm -hmm. season with the outcome that we had at the at the tour championship and rory mcelroy doing what rory mcelroy does i borrowed a line from you often mark and used it it's one thing to be the game's leading player, it's quite another to be its leading man. And Rory mm -hmm. on many levels is the, the conscience, if you will, of the PGA Tour and of professional golf. And uh, the statements that he made over the last several weeks with all the noise along the periphery um, were resounding. And he made those, those statements with his performance, with his words and with his actions. And that's what uh, leading players do. I'm just proud that I made that very <laughs> poignant statement. That was cool. Hey, listen, I'm, I'm getting ahead of me. I normally do when I'm around you. I just, I, I love the, the golf and the relationship of it all that we have. Um, but for my stand up on the Sunday morning, uh, yeah, I've done the show, the, the pre game show at the Tour Championship with you before. And I did it on the 18th green and I had one of the East Lake tees and it had the, the shamrock insignia on it, as you know, the four leaf clover. And and after watching him finish on Sunday morning, the Saturday round, a couple of quick birdies, and after having seen the guy, and I'm going to podcast about this, just seeing how Thursday he had absolutely nothing. The thing was, we were littering Atlanta with shots, and somehow he shot 67, three under. Then uh, Friday got a bit better, not as sharp, but it was cleaner. Then Saturday he became Rory, you know, thoroughbred. And with the finish on Sunday morning, I'm like, you better look out because for Scotty, God bless him, you know, things can only really go wrong. If he wins, he's supposed to number one guy the whole year. And I just felt like it was destiny. So I finished this on camera with, I held the T into the screen like this, the, the monitor. And I'm like the four leaf clover, Bob Jones, lucky charm. I feel like someone is going to have the luck of the Irish today. Sort of a spin on McElroy, the finish, the whole thing. And, uh, I didn't mean to be prophetic, but it turned out that way. And to your point, it was just, it was unreal the way the whole thing unfolded. And it started with a tee shot into Arendelle Road on Thursday <laughs> morning, which is akin to, you know, backing your car out of the garage and hitting a tree to start mm -hmm. your your day. And uh, somehow recovered from that triple bogey and a bogey to follow on uh, on the second hole. I, I know the great reverence that you have for Bob Jones. You've quoted him mm -hmm. many times. Um, I also understand your fascination with Rory McIlroy. I've stood next to you where you've salivated, and I've also watched you pull your hair out oh, yeah. this guy <laughs> through the years. So uh, it must have been uh, an emotionally turbulent uh, tour championship to call in Atlanta there, certainly. Yeah, it was. It was, again, sort of emblematic of the entire year. So let's dive into it. Um, all right, let's start with the highlights. Um, there are no low lights here, but we'll, we'll deal with one or two th of those things. We're not all sunshine and, and lollipops. Um, for me, you know me, I'm a golf guy and I get sort of wound up by shots. And so I'll tee you off. I'll give you, I've got three shots essentially um, that were my highlights of the year. And I got to see these, right? Uh, I was in the front row seat on the golf course. And the first one 
we'll keep it on the Rory theme, was the 16th hole called the Rink at the RBC Canadian Open. St. George is just a beautiful spot. Rory is making a Saturday surge. I have his group. They get there. They've got about oh, easily 5,000 people around this one hole. And they are going bananas. They are shouting, screaming. Rory has been on 15. And you can see over there, he's made a birdie putt. They serenading him coming onto the tee. I walked through there. I felt like I was on top of the world, right? And then they're banging on these boards. And Rory gets there. And eventually, they settle down. He steps over the seven iron up the hill and he hits this beautiful little cutter off the flag to about 15 feet, just high octane. And walking up the hill, I'm in front of him 30 yards. I turn around and I'm backing up as I'm looking at him. And I was like, nice shot, man. <laughs> and he sort of gives me the, as if to say that was heavy. So for me, that was arguably my, one of my highlights of the year. You? Yeah? Um, I picked three moments. One was sort of a shot and a moment wrapped up into one. Um, it was disappointing finish to the season for Scotty Scheffler, but mm -hmm. his stretch of golf there in the spring, Mark, when he won four times in six events was Tiger-esque. In fact, it's the first time someone has won four times in a single season on the PGA Tour in that short of a stretch, including a World Golf Championship and a major championship since Tiger in 2008 when he was Thanks. winning eight times you see why he's a good host because he's got these nuggets that he just drops from heaven and they're so appropriate yeah yeah i'm, I'm, I'm getting where you're going here such a long season and, and you, you can't sustain that level of play every week unless you're named tiger woods and you're at the height of your powers around that time but uh that stretch that scheffler produced for me was was otherworldly I thought Matthew Fitzpatrick's performance at the U.S. Open, in particular the shot he hit from the fairway bunker at 18 on Sunday there at the Country Club, was uh, just the stuff of a pretty special player. And to complete the narrative and to author a story as he did on a golf course where he captured the U.S. Amateur back in 2013 uh, was pretty cool. And the third moment for me was the start of the FedEx Cup playoffs, and it was the battle between Will Zalatoris and Sepp Straka in Memphis at the mm -hmm. FedEx St. Jude. And Sepp Straka is not a household name, Mark, to, to many golf fans. Will Zalatoris certainly is becoming a household name. But the battle that they waged and the purity of that competition and the energy that it created amongst the, the gallery members there in Memphis and the folks that were watching on the network call was... Uh, pretty special as well. So those three things from a, a, a myriad of shots and moments throughout the course of the year kind of resonated with me. Awesome. My, I, I had plenty. Honorable mentions was, was Tiger Woods flying to Delaware for the player only meeting uh, in response to all of the live debacle. Um, but that was honorable moment. My other two were also two shots. Uh, one was a Torrey Pines Saturday. Ninth hole, par five. <clears throat> that mist is coming off the ocean. You know, know what it's like. It's not rolling in to stop uh, play right then. And it was cold enough that the ball wasn't going anywhere. And John Rahm, as the ball sort of above his feet, slightly hanging live, front hole location, bunkers everywhere. I mean, just difficult. And he gets there from 245 to the flag. It was about 240 front. I still, I'll never forget the number. Hits this four iron, takes off <laughs> like a homesick angel, just levels off and accelerates and lands beyond the flag on the middle of the green. Flew at like 250 in the cold with a four iron. And he walks up to me, big swagger, and he's way bigger than I am. I am and I look at him, I'm like, that was good. And he goes, yeah, I know. <laughs> I was like, oh, cool. You know, just certain folks can hit those shots and he's one of those. And then the other one was also a golf shot at the Byron Nelson, in fact. And it, I love this one because it helped me parlay a decision the following week at the PGA Championship, which earned me a whole lot of points in our one and done league, which led to a season long victory. And it was Justin Thomas, 12th hole downhill par five, hanging large just in the first cut of rough, bunkers green above you, and he hit this five wood that was like raw spaghetti. It was so straight. I mean, this thing took off, didn't deviate, middle of the green, 15 feet, and that shot changed my decision on him for the following week at the PGA Championship, which worked out well. So uh, so those were my top three moments. Yeah, and you've had the good fortune of uh, having a front row seat to so much great PGA mm -hmm. Tour action through the years, right? And 
uh, you sound like these legendary players who never forget a shot, no matter how deep into the background of their career they need to go to. You know, I still, I still pinch myself to to think about what you and I do and the events we've been to, and stuff. How um, th- that I'm there, I get to describe these things and just kind of watch them as a fan. It's it's mind numbing to to see the guys at the height of their power, and that's what I love. What PGA Tour Live does, and you're obviously wearing the live hoodie there. Yeah, no question. And uh, I can't wait to get it cranked back up. We've got uh, two weeks to recharge before the, the start of the Fortinet uh, Championship. And Max Homa will get set to defend out there in wine country in Napa, California. And it's always fun to see the new faces on the PGA Tour as well, Mark. And uh, we'll add a few to that tally this week, the Corn Ferry Tour Championship in Indiana. 25 guys have already earned their PGA Tour cards. 25 more will be given out. And we typically see most of them uh, start their season in Napa in a couple of weeks. Mm, one of those faces I'm going to list to you, players to watch in a little while. First off, our all PGA Tour team, five guys, right? I'll give you mine and I'll let you respond. Okay. Scheffler, Rory, Xander, Matthew Fitzpatrick. I'm going to take Twitter heat for this one. <laughs> he was straight a second strokes gain on the whole season, strokes gain total. And to me, just to your point, took another step in his career and he's changed the way he plays. He was grindy, blue collar, didn't hit very long, kind of ugly sort of golf. Now he hits it and he flushes. I had him in the third round at the tour championship and he was keeping it up there with Justin Thomas off the tee. And as we know, JT is not short. And then my fifth guy, I was sort of vacillating back and forth, but I went with Sam Burns just because of also his ascendance to the top of the game how comfortable he is with it and the fact that he had three victories, which is special. So those are my five. And you? Uh, crossover on four of those five. Rory and Scotty, uh, obviously, I'm glad you picked Sam Burns because it was the quietest three-win season in mm-hmm. some time that I can recall. And one of those victories at the Valspar Championship at a title defense, which is a brutally tough course there, the Copperhead outside of Tampa, and a winner at uh, Colonial, which, you know, much like – Pebble Beach and uh, Mm -hmm. Harbor Town, Torrey Pines. Absolutely. Uh, It's a feather in your cap kind of victory. Uh, Shoffley also with the three wins. One was alongside Cantley in New Orleans in the team event. But the two-week stretch that Shoffley was able to put together, Mark, in Hartford and the Scottish Open, uh, I think people should really step back and take a closer look at because it was uh, a statement, I think, from Shoffley who had come so close so often over the last few seasons without closing the door. Uh, that sort of elevated the stature of his game. And the yeah. last guy for me is is Tony Fina, who went five years uh, yeah. between victories before he won in the FedEx Cup playoffs last year uh, and then followed it up with a multiple win season and did it in back-to-back fashion in Minnesota and Detroit. So Tony has sort of uh, illustrated where his game is at right now. Now, you might be wondering how both of us have omitted Cam Smith from this conversation as the guy who won the players championship and the open championship. And, you know, within the truly historic context of the game, you mm-hmm. know, that's as, as good a season as any player is likely to hope for, but I don't consider Cam Smith part of the PGA tour yeah. membership right now. So for the technical purposes of this conversation, that's why he doesn't make the top five for me. And that's why I sort of leveled the, the Twitter heat thing. Um, and, and to Tony, um, I'm teasing this, so maybe I'm being naughty, but watch out on the PGA Tours YouTube account in just a little while because we're doing a cool thing there, just a deep dive into golf swings, and Finau is one of them. It's right up my alley. It's kind of like uh, the Launchpad channel we used to do back in the day, but on acid, <laughs> so, I'm, so I'm excited about this. Um, okay, I think we're probably going to be lockstep here. If, you, if we aren't, then I'm the fool. Rookie of the year, obviously, Sahith Thigala put together a wonderful season. And I just love his attitude, man. He's so refreshing. And he's just so down to earth. And when I have brushes with him, he, he just brightens my day because he just loves the game. Um, but Cam Young was virtuoso, right? No doubt. Six and a half million dollars. No rookie has ever earned more <laughs> okay. without winning. I mean, my goodness. And the events at which he performed his best PGA championship, the open at St. Andrews, a chance to win both of those. It's a very similar career trajectory. It seems to me, Mark, as Salatoris 
last year as we waited for Will to break through and win for the first time. And he was contending mm -hmm. seemingly all the time, big events, major championships before finally winning to kick off the playoffs this year. So uh, Cam Young is going to win on the PJ Tour this coming season. I feel certain of it and probably more than once, if you ask me. All right. Um, player of the year, Rory, the PGA Tour is Alpha B. You know, Tiger is number one, but currently, you know, of players, was essentially broadcasting this on Sunday of the Tour Championship after he had won, where he, in every interview Rory gave, I heard him say, Scotty, Scotty Scheffler, Scotty, it was ad nauseum, just, just glowing about Scotty's year-long performance, which you highlighted. Um, it's a player vote, I feel like, Scheffler. I don't even think it's going to be a, 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 con a, a conflict at all this year. <clears throat> so Scheffler. Okay, I thought you were leaning toward Rory. It's easy to make the case of Rory. Well, Rory was speaking so highly of him. I mean, it was he, Rory was who is the PGA Tours guy right now, the figurehead. He's going Scotty this, Scotty that, and and and, and I can't fault that decision. Yeah, and I think the fact that it is a, a player vote, the membership will take note of the the body of work. It's easy to sort of get swept up in what we've just witnessed and mm -hmm. what we witnessed from McElroy over the weekend in Atlanta was was pretty extor extraordinary. But the body of work for Scotty Scheffler with four victories, a green jacket and a World Golf Championship stands on its own merit. I don't think it will be a close vote. Yeah. All right. Favorite events on tour. I'm going to get, throw a few of mine at yours. One of them is upcoming in just a little while. And I know I, know I shouldn't date this podcast because it lives in the Internet. But the President's Cup at Quail Hollow. Um, I happen to know the captain of the international team, so I'm quite excited about this. <laughs> but yeah, mine. The Mexico Open at Vedanto was just awesome. It, it was a tremendous experience, Puerto Vallarta. Pebble Beach is always great. I called um, Tom Hoagie to his first win, and to watch him accelerate past the field and pull it off was, was thrilling to me. I'll remember it. Canada, I mentioned the Canadian Open back. I mean, the fans there in Toronto were rabid, and, and it was such a thrill to be there. And then, of course, the Tour Championship. So I know that's four, but did you have a favorite event? By the way, first of all, you may be in line for a captain selection from Trevor just to round out his stuff, <laughs> his roster right now. <laughs> My goodness, uh, the, the Canadian Open for me was was um, sort of the benchmark of the PGA Tour season for a number of reasons. Mark, first of all, they hadn't played it in two mm -hmm. weeks, and the two years, two years rather. Yeah. Thank you. The the thirst for competition that those ordinarily rabid Canadian golf fans had was ratcheted up uh, even higher after a two-year hiatus and the field that was assembled was really strong and the players in contention late on Sunday oh. v now mm -hmm. Justin Thomas McElroy all delivered Sam and, Burns was there too by the way and Sam Burns as well that's right and it was all happening by the way at um, sort of the epicenter of all the noise that was happening outside the PJ Tour in the golf world and it was yeah. once again an emphatic statement from McElroy with his clubs and a couple of um, very uh, finely timed quips uh, as well after the final round on Sunday that uh, for me just made it the moment of the year on the PGA Tour. Uh, and um, Commissioner Monaghan coming up there and <clears throat> getting on our Saturday broadcast and delivering a well-crafted very poignant um, not even a speech just comments on the state of the game and what the PGA Tour represented. I, I thought the whole thing, there was, um, it, it's not destiny, but just like a heavenly inspiration to the entire event that week. Yeah, <clears throat> no question about it. And, um, and to have Rory in position to win on a week that was, uh, you know, s such an important moment, the timing of it within mm. the game was just, uh, it was serendipitous, really. It really was. Um, disappointment of the year. I'll let you go first, and I'll have mine. I feel like we might be uh, in agreement here, so go ahead. Well, I think it's obvious, and, and I, I took this um, in sort of a different direction, not a disappointing season from a player, but everything that has unfolded with the, the game this year that I think is really fracturing the game, all the defections. And, and look, I don't – I want to try and characterize this uh, the right way – if it is simply money and financial riches that you're after, and it's simply greed that you're chasing, then fine, then, then go for it. No hard feelings. We will, we will see you down the road. Mm -hmm. I think the, the problem that the players have, Mark, and I feel this way 
as well is how contentious uh, and, and rancorous all the commentary has been on the way out the door from these players and the antitrust lawsuits that have been filed. I don't see any place for that. You know, if you want to move along and make a decision that you feel is best for you and your family, by the way, as I said, great, go for it. Be happy if that's what uh, your, your calling is at whatever stage of your professional career is at. Um, but don't go kicking and screaming out the door with uh, with snide comments. I think there's there's no place for that. And that's the aspect of this, the component of it that is really fracturing the game, I think. Yeah, um, obviously the live league is a thing and, and I'm with you. Players are entitled to, human beings are entitled to do whatever they decide. Uh, and, and if you want to go, go, by all means, go ahead. And if the live league wants to exist, by all means, go ahead and try and exist. But for me, the disappointment was when this eventually everyone was like, it's going to end in the courtroom. It's like they knew it was happening. And then it was just doubled down on. And when the lawsuits came out and then there were more lawsuits and then there's golfers who now have moved and then they're trying to get back into events. Like we had the events at the Genesis Scottish Open where a few guys were in the field because of a stay that was issued by a judge over there. And then of course, with the attempt to get into the playoffs, I'm like, you've taken the money, just move along now. And so that to me was a little disappointing that the game I love so much has is now its fate is largely going to be decided in the courtroom, which doesn't settle too well with me. You know, through the years in professional sports along the landscape, there, there's been threats of, of breakaway leagues. There always has been. And I think that competition at its core is healthy if it forces an existing league to sort of reexamine its, its business model. And I think... Um, the PJ Tour was pretty agile in its uh, response. I mean, that was not an insignificant uh, return of volley. And it was something clearly they had had their eye on and, and paid close attention to for mm -hmm. a long time before making the very bold strides that they made over the last couple of weeks to protect the financial incentives of its top players. Mm. Now, bold, bold strides. Um, look, you and I were sort of at the forefront uh, you were long before me, but I joined you. You were our boss's A team. Um, you and Craig Perks and Billy Kratz and you and guys invited me to join. So I was there when it was live at. Um, speaking of bowl strides, I was alongside you, and that was one of my favorite moments. Earlier 2022, you guys had done the two events in Hawaii. I was green with envy, but I, that's beside the point. Um, and then I came and joined you, and we opened up the main feed for the American Express event down there in what's now a uh, TV compound at PGA Tour Entertainment, which is going to become a building unto itself next to the headquarters in Ponte Vedra in a couple of short years. Um, this venture of PGA Tour Lives was bold, and I feel like handsomely rewarded as we look back over the first season, right? I can't wait for the next eight seasons. Um... <laughs> I hope I'm around for the next eight seasons. I'll keep fooling them every time that uh, I'm able to put a microphone on and uh, <laughs> hopefully it will last for the duration uh, of the deal with, uh, with ESPN Plus. But it's been, it's been so much fun. I think it is something that the golf fans care about. I, I hope so. You know, judging from the uh, reaction, I think, it's, I think it's pretty positive. I think uh, it caters to a certain audience that really is passionate about the game. And, yeah cannot consume enough of it. And that's why we come on so early and we, we stay on so late. We give them as many shots as we can. Well, along those lines, you know, I, I get to work for another network and so I work late on Saturday and Sunday. I'll always watch live Saturday morning, you know, Sunday a little bit before church um, and on Thursday and Friday, obviously. And it's such, it's entertainment, but it's such a resource. And the tour championship last week, I was chatting with guys and all of them were like, Hey, you're working for life. You know, it's like, it was a change of scenery for them. So I was like, yeah. And I heard caddies, players, player uh, advisories, like, um, you know, the, the guys that do the stats and stuff for them. They're like, this has been a game changer for me. Live that is. And I heard more than one caddy go, you know what? I used to have to go and walk a golf course and see how the golf course is performing before the afternoon tea time. He goes, but then you get to a hole and you stand there and no one hits the green. So you, you know, for two groups and you don't have the time. So you'll move along. He goes now with PGA tour live, we see all we need to. And the players, the caddies, they, they love, they love it as well. 
It's um, it's quite a commitment from everyone who manages the the production. Uh, you've mentioned a few names just among the announced team, but mm -hmm. without the producers and the directors and mm -hmm. uh, the camera folks and the audio operators and the folks that uh, build the graphics and the folks on the ground doing advance work before the start of the tournament, uh, every technical aspect of the production, it, it doesn't happen. I mean, these are these are unsung heroes. Uh, many of them you and I have worked with for years. Many of them <laughs> we've forged personal relationships with. They're great folks. They care as much about the product as the people who are consuming the product. And that is uh, the difference from week to week. And uh, hopefully to people watching, it really shows what they see and what they hear. It's what, it's what makes it special. There's a, there's a passion in the ownership that everyone um, has. All right, last question. I'll let you go. Um, new season's upon us. You teased it. Fortinet in just a couple of weeks, hard to believe. Um, players to watch. Here's me. I'm going to go with two. There are many. Um, I've got a few honorable mentions, but folks can tweet me if they want to know about that stuff. I'm going to say Rory as a player to watch because of what Rory's found in his game. And I'm going to podcast about this because Rory to me, and was always been, and I've talked to you and pulled my hair out at times calling him on live, where he's a thoroughbred and you've got to run him on a loose rein because if you try and muzzle him a little bit, he, did, he can't be Rory. But I saw him display a gear in the first round at the Tour Championship in 2022, which was resilient Rory. It was stick to it Rory. It was find a way Rory. And, and that to me bodes really well. And then you add to that the short game skill and the way he's putting right now. There's a whole lot of stuff percolating. So I'm liking where he is. And then as a potential rookie, he's not a rookie. Um, he's been around the block some from South Africa. He's won a couple times over in Europe, but Dean Burmester, watch that name. He hits it a ton. He's a really easygoing sort. He's uh, graduating through the Corn Ferry Finals now. I texted him. He's excited. Uh, and I feel like Dean, uh, the machine, is going to uh, make a little waves uh, in, in the new season. What say you? Other than Jordan Spieth at the John Deere Classic in 2013, no one on the PGA Tour since World War II has won at a younger age than Tom Kim did before turning 21 oh, wow. at the Wyndham Championship. He mm -hmm. went from special temporary membership to full-time membership of the PGA Tour, qualified for the FedEx Cup playoffs, and he's going to be part of uh, Captain Trevor's International President's yeah. Cup team at Quail Hollow next month. I'll be playing foursomes with him, by the way. <laughs> 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 oh, that's so good. Kidding, folks. I was joking. <laughs> uh, this kid is so good. He's already won six times around the globe, but he's not 21 years of age yet. And uh, watch the President's Cup in, in a month, and you'll get a taste of uh, just how good Tom Kim is and how much of an impact I expect him to make beginning next season. The other guy who I would say watch out for is an established player. In fact, he won twice this season, but I think he is this close to taking his game to a higher level. And that's Max Homa. He's going to defend mm -hmm. in Napa in a couple of weeks, Mark. And I think he's going to be on the U.S. side for the President's Cup team, competing for an international team for the first time in his career. Um, the only box that Max has not checked is winning a big one, a World Golf Championship, contending in a major championship. Yeah. And I think that's the next step that he's poised to take beginning next season. Um, agreed. Uh Another colleague of mine, Colt Nost, made the brave quip earlier this year that Max was going to win a major. And I texted him. I'm like, really? <laughs> and uh, now after having watched him for a little while, I'll say maybe Colt was a year early on this, but he certainly, to me, is, looks like he's got all of, the, all of the tools required. And to put a capper on the Tom Kim thing, I had him that final round in Greensboro at the Wyndham Championship. He turns in 27 for Pete's sake, all right? Chasing down the lead as a rookie on tour. He's exhausted because he'd gone like five weeks straight already, playing pure on pure adrenaline. And then on that back nine, if I had an all straightest long iron hitter in the game, he would be the number one guy. He had some three and four irons that were like frozen ropes. I mean, it was unbelievable. And then you add to that his skill on the green. See, he is one to watch. Yeah, no question about it. I'm, I'm looking forward to the President's Cup. I'm sorry Trevor's roster is a little bit depleted because mm -hmm. I think the international side was really – poised um, and on the doorstep maybe of winning this thing for the first time since 1998. But stranger things have happened. They're obviously prohibitive underdogs now. There's a certain freedom that comes with being yeah. in that role. There is. And 
remember it's match play and it's just 18 holes and the lion's share of that event is team matches so if you can pair the right people off you never know all right john um appreciate your time please share with the folks apart from pga tour live and golf channel and all these platforms you broadcast on where they can find you what's the social media and such well, I'm on Twitter at Jay Swan PGA Tour. There's links to the Talk of the Tour podcast that mm -hmm. I kick out every week. Talked to a couple of Corn Ferry Tour grads yesterday. We'll have a couple more that I'm going to showcase next Wednesday and then perhaps the following week as well uh, for the Fortinet Championship. And the podcast is available. Same platforms where they get uh, on the mark. And you can always hit me on Twitter. Did you chat to Kevin Yu? Uh, I did not. I spoke with Kevin Roy, who's 32 mm -hmm. and has got yeah. his card for the first time, and Taylor Montgomery, who's the guy that finished 26th and was agonizingly short last year. Kevin, you played for my Arnold Palmer Cup team a few seasons ago. Another okay. one to watch. John, you're the best. Appreciate your time, man. Thank you. Peace, brother. Always a pleasure.